Hey everyone and welcome to Listen Up. That's right, it's our brand new show where we talk about all topics under the sun which are relevant to not just Christians but also non-Christians alike. And uh, we believe that a lot of people can glean a lot from these topics that we talk about. And uh, you know, we've had a very uh, interesting first two topics uh, where I brought my wife along. And today we have also a very special guest. I'm sure by now you've seen her uh, in Let's Get Real and we thought that, hey, you know, we cannot let her go just so easily. We want to bring her on to speak about this uh, very interesting topic, one that a lot of people have actually also requested for. It is the topic of LGBT. BT and there's no better person that I can think in my mind than her. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome for the second time in the LGR umbrella, but now on Listen Up, this show instead, uh, Reverend Trifina Law, the Executive Director of Pursuing Liberty Under Christ PLUC. Let's give her a big warm welcome. Clap, 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 clap. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me, Brenda. Please, uh, please, please uh, thank, uh, no, 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 not say please thank, uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, not please thank me. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming back again on the show. That's right. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, it is very, very nice of you to come on and join us for Listen Up as well. And uh, this is quite a new show. We just launched it this year. And uh, we also want to say thank you so much for coming on LGR. Now, uh, Reverend Trifina, how are you doing today? Okay? Very good? Oh, yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good, huh? Okay, mm. fantastic. Now, uh, today's topic, it's a very interesting one. And... Uh, it's something that is not easy to talk about, in, especially in Malaysia. Uh, in this mm. part of the region, you know, it's something that is very sensitive. I would say a lot, of, a lot of things surrounding this topic is also a very delicate thing. And more often than not, it sparks a lot of debate. It sparks a lot of controversy. It sparks a lot of argument as well. And so <clears throat> when I was thinking, how can I talk about this topic, uh, you know, share about, you know, what the Bible says and share about... Um, Christians, right? how do we respond to something like this? You know, I was thinking to myself, there's no better person to talk about this than you. Uh, before we talk about this, I want to talk a, and speak a little bit about your ministry first of all. Now, you run a ministry called Pursuing Liberty Under Christ, uh, you know, in short, PLUC. Uh, yes. Tell me a little bit about this ministry, what it does, how it started, and uh, mm. what is your role in this ministry? Well, PLUC has been around for the last... Uh, this is our 19 year. Mm. Okay. So I, and I've been uh, serving in this uh, ministry or organization for the last 18 years. So our focus is mainly threefold. Okay. Mm -hmm. Threefold mission. Uh, we relate, advocate, and educate. So relate as in uh, providing, because it's a Christian based organization, I, I first need to clarify that. Okay. So, and we are not a counseling center, but we provide pastoral care. And pastoral counseling, not not the secular kind of counseling. Mm. Okay, so that's where the relate part we offer pastoral care, pastoral counseling, especially for those who are in pain, uh, for those who struggle with their gender issues and mm. they want to discover more about their own gender identity. Mm. Okay, mm. so what we do is that we are not here to change them or anything, but we are here to walk with them, to journey with them. That's the relate part. Then the advocate is what I'm doing right now, <laughs> where, whereby I'm just uh, creating awareness and then bridging the gap between uh, uh, especially the Christian community with mm -hmm. the strugglers. Okay? So we bridge the gap so that we can equip and educate uh, uh, those who do not have this knowledge. And last but not least, the mission is on educate where we provide training. Mm -hmm. So we equip... Uh, People who are interested, uh, churches especially, since our focus is mainly in the Christian circle. Yeah, I understand. Mm. Wow, mm. it sounds like, it sounds so simple, but I'm sure it's <laughs> much harder, you know, in, in, you know, it sounds in theory very simple and straightforward. But I think in well, reality, it must mm. be not easy at all. It must be a well, very difficult... I mean, I mean, it's just like when you ask me to come online uh. and I know trying to enter into using all the gadgets, it's, it's like, <laughs> you know, the, the, the language that you guys speak was like, huh, can you speak my lingo? Uh, so I... right now, I'm speaking something probably is a, yeah. it's a difficult lingo for you. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. But you've been very, very, uh, very good in, uh, you know, fidgeting with the gadgets to come on to the show today. Uh... Um, so we're going to sit straight, go and dive straight into it, sure. right? Sure. Now, homosexuality, mm -hmm. like I said again, is a very big topic, you know. And it's mm -hmm. great to know that there are uh, Christian organizations, you know, uh, Bible-based organizations out there like PLUC that is helping and being mm -hmm. in this sphere 
uh, of of this uh, big topic of homosexuality. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm sure as well, you know, as a Christian organization, a lot of things falls back to the Bible. A lot of things that you know, mm-hmm. when you're unsure, when yep. you're mm-hmm. when you're a bit confused, uh, it is very normal mm-hmm. for Christians to always okay. Let's see what does the Bible say. Let's see what does God has to say in His Word, right? Mm-hmm. So when it comes mm-hmm. down to homosexuality, we also tend to do the normal thing to run back mm-hmm. to the Word of God and see. What does the Bible say about homosexuality? So this is really my first question uh, to you, uh, Trifina. What what does you know for for some people who may not know, some people who, be, uh, who are confused as well, you know, uh, who have maybe no time to dive into the word or n- don't have the expertise to do the exegesis or you know don't don't know how to do the hermeneutics and everything like that. What does neither, the Bible say? Neither do I. <laughs> neither do I. Hey, four years uh, in seminary, uh, Reverend Trifina, uh, you want me to speak I, I, to the I president? I understand or? the word of God. Yeah. But I think to exegete, uh, I think to exegete, there will be certain experts that would mm-hmm. that would do a more uh, what do you call study on it, and right. there are already books available. Okay, I think I'm sure there yeah. are many resources available. Yeah, right, there are many resources available. But let me mm. just simplify it. Okay. okay. Uh, I think uh, it, it will be a very um, debatable and, and argumentative for me to bring up the, the most uh, common six passages uh, mm-hmm. that, that they always say that this is what the Bible say about homosexuality. Okay? And I think today I want to draw your attention to, uh, from, to look at it from a different angle. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about authentic human sexuality. Mm. <laughs> All right, if you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, and of course 26, you know, uh, God says, Let us therefore make, you know, man, make, make human, mm. you know, uh, uh, like earth, you know. So over there in verse 26 itself, it's a, it really talk about the, the Trinity God and talks about the God hate, okay, God being the one that have created us. And, and, and then 27 it says, Let us make. You know, uh, uh, we uh, know we are going to create them in our own image, in the yeah. image of God that He has created, male and female. So what I want to say here is, if we look at human sexuality, God Himself has demonstrated to us that He has make us different as male and female. Yet He wants us to be united. Mm. Okay, why do I say that? Because if you go on and look at chapter two, that's in Genesis chapter two. God called this man out, God called this woman out, and God joined them together, and the two shall become one. Mm-hmm. So even though they are different, because Adam, if you, if you look at it, Adam himself actually didn't, didn't ask God for a companion. You know, I mean, but God gave him, God saw mm. that Adam is alone, and God gave him a companion. And when Adam saw Eve, it's like, wow, you know? Mm. So, so he, you see, come on, I mean, if you see another guy, it's like, Okay, but if you see your wife, you saw your wife at the time, wow, you know, I mean, it's, it's like we are supposed to be human, mm-hmm. yet we are different. And God called these two different, male and female, mm. and God joined them together. Mm. So from here, it talks already about God's original creation. Mm. His creation is, is that he has created one man, one woman. One husband, one wife, and of course, you know, uh, and the two shall become one. Mm. And and if we read on the, the, the scripture that, that no one should separate them, mm. that is till death do us part. Mm. So mm. I want to draw attention that, you know, what does the Bible talk about homosexuality? I think God has so much to talk about his creation as well as marriage, that mm. he has made earth male and female. And he has joined them together. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then he has given them, them here is husband and wife, the gift of sex. The gift of sex is not just for procreation alone, but the gift of sex here is for them to have a deeper level of knowing each other, of knowing the uh, themselves as well as knowing God. Mm-hmm. So, so that is his original intention. But mm. what happened in Genesis chapter 3, sin came in. And I always, uh, I always make a joke. Like, I'm not sure whether the Bible scholars were, 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 were for that. You know, I say that's the beginning of human right. <laughs> you know? Because in chapter 3, you know, God actually told Adam and Eve, mm. you know, go and rule this world that I've given to you. 
Alright? Yep. Go and rule. Rule over everything that I've, I have given to you except for this tree mm-hmm. of life, this, not, this fruit that you should not take. But that's where they exercise their human right. And this is the beginning of this human right class, <laughs> civil right movement. And, and this, <laughs> I, and... I call it a beginning. Like, it's the beginning <laughs> of disobedience. Mm-hmm. You see, the thing is this. God, that's, that's the thing about God. No? He didn't take away. He gave us this free will. He gave us this, this thing that is different than all other creation of His. That's mm. the free will. And he, and, and he let us rule the world, yet He's telling us that He's still the one that's sovereign. Mm. Because there's this tree that we should not take the fruit. Mm. But man chose to disobey. Man wants to be God. They disobey God, you know, and they walk away from God. Mm. Now, I want to draw your attention here is that even though they walk away from God, there's something that has never been lost in them. And that is the image of God. Mm. Even though they walk away from God, the image of God is still there. Because remember 127, God created them in His own image. Mm-hmm. In His own image, He created male and female. Yep. So that's the beginning, the fall of man. What happened is this. God created the gift of sex mm. for couple. He called this man, called this woman, joined them together. He gave them this gift of sex. But when, when sin came in in chapter 3, not only the world no longer is the world that God has created, it has also distorted the meaning of sex. Mm. Can you see mm-hmm. the fallen nature here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's us, it's, we, we corrupt what was meant for good basically. Mm, yeah, we can say that. Mm. Yeah, but we tend to blame God. Yeah, <laughs> also very <laughs> typical of. It. Yeah, we, yeah we, we tend to blame God. It's like God, you, you you already know, and then you still put the tree of life there. Now, right. God, God. One thing about Him is that He didn't take away the freedom, the free will, because He didn't create AI. Mm. Artificial intelligence. A, uh. Yeah, He didn't create us as robots and whatever. Yeah. He created it such that we can still have that choice. And even after yes. we choose to sin, uh, He didn't take away that free will. We still could choose yes. a lot of things in life. Right. Yeah, And I think that's one of the beauty of, uh, as well of humanity, that we have this free will. Amazing. Yes. So yes. I love how you interpret it and put things into perspective here. Rather than be so fixated on really, you know, <laughs> Leviticus or, you know, all these biblical passages. Uh, you want speak... another day, like during training, I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> When, when we sign up for the educate part uh, in the three, four minutes, right? yeah, that one we can sign up for another day. But I love how you also draw it back to the original intention uh, yes. of how, number one, you know, man was created uh, in God's image, both men, male and female, and they were joined together uh, and they become yes. one flesh. And the yes. original intention of this union of yes. men and women. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful. Uh, and that's a very good way and a good perspective to have. Mm. Now, mm. obviously, you know, a lot of us uh, who are Christians, uh, we have a very people know us somehow, you know, in the world as this very judgmental group of people, especially when it comes to dealing with homosexuality and homosexuals as individuals. Uh, we're, talk- we're not talking about the topic homosexuality. We're talking about people. Yeah. We're talking about homosexuals here, and I think a lot of us uh, something we get disconnected with that. We're so against homosexuality that sometimes there's mm. a unseen barrier that we've created with homosexuals, mm. and that's mm. why they feel that rift. They feel that mm. you know that that sort of judgment cloak over them and so right. you know when i when i want to ask you in your ministry as well and what you do for the past you know 19 years uh how how would you say a christian how can a christian for example i'm a christian uh how mm. should a christian how can a christian respond to someone he or she knows is a homosexual mm. Mm. i think it's a very important question this one yes it is it is a very important question mm. yeah um Somebody also asked this very simple question, Brandon. Why mm. is it that we magnify the word homosexuality? Right. When we don't even magnify premarital sex. We don't even magnify adultery. Mm. You know, we don't even magnify cohabiting together. Mm. You know? mm. We don't even magnify the word gossiping. Mm. <laughs> you know, but we tend to magnify this. And uh, like it or not, uh, throughout the years, we... Uh, uh, like I say, you know, I may, I may, I may get kicked out of this church, but I don't care, you know. But but what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is that the church itself, in the past, we we have 
been practicing double standard. We have been pra- practicing double standard as in being uh, embracing to certain community, but yet being very harsh on the LGBT. I use this word uh, easier. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's why that's that's what PLC is also. We have this call by God uh, mm. that we hope that we can do this to be the bridge. Is to help the church. When I talk about church, it's not just the church per se, the building, but every individual who are Christians, you are the church. Okay, uh, we hope that the church can be gay friendly, but yet not gay affirming. That's very different. Okay, mm. gay friendly, same like let's be gossipers friendly, mm. but not gossiping affirming. Mm. You know. Uh, we, we need to be a place like a hospital whereby if you ask me the first response if it's a hospital where the person that is wounded nearly die about to die come in of course not during this season uh, the hospital not enough space but, but what I'm trying to say is that is that you know when we go to the hospital they won't ask you hey Brandon you got insurance or not mm. <laughs> they only they treat you no it is their medical ethics that whoever that is injured irregardless of gender, irregardless of races or whatever, we will treat that person. Mm. So church needs to respond this way, that when when someone who is so different than us walk mm. into the church, let us, let us not put on a different kind of lens and look at them mm. in a different way, but let us put on the lens of Jesus. Mm. You know, I can't help it, huh? pastor must tell a bit of story about the Bible. Yeah. You know, I remember the story of Jesus being surrounded by who? Sinners and tax collectors. Hello, during his time, uh, sinners and tax collectors are people that, you know, that, that in general, people do not want to be with them. Very despicable <laughs> group of people. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Especially tax collectors. Especially, you know? yeah. Robbing from yeah. their own. Yeah, yeah that's right. But, but if you read the scripture carefully, they surrounded Jesus. Mm-hmm. Not Jesus called them, you know. They surrounded him. They were drawn to Jesus. And I actually asked myself this simple question. You think Jesus will say, uh, okay, you, you are doing what tax collecting. Uh, you continue to go and go and torture people and then go and, you know, go and be like, you know, whack them up, you know, you know, pour red paint over their house and burn their cars and things like that. You think Jesus will say that, uh, go on and do it. Do you think Jesus will tell the guy who has been sleeping around, continue sleeping uh, around with other people's wife? I don't think Jesus will do that because he is the truth. Mm. He will not compromise. Mm. So when I say that, let's be gay friendly and not gay affirming, which means that we need to be like Jesus with open arms, accepting them. Mm. Accepting them doesn't mean that we affirm Mm. or we compromise with the truth. Mm. I love that you mentioned that as well, and you you sort of you know uh, spilled into answering my third question a little bit, and you spoke oh, a little bit. I'm so sorry. About, no, no, no. You spoke a little bit about you know the church, the, the role of the church, and of course yeah. you know that stems you know I've, you know it was uh, our I was I wanted to ask about the an individual response, but of course you mentioned a little bit about church, which makes sense because what you said we are the church. Every individual yeah. is a church as well, yeah. so it's no surprise there your answer. Uh, yeah. Would it be fair to say that as it stands right now? I mean, let's not talk about so far. La. Let's not talk about global or in US or anything. Like that. Let's just bring it back home here in Malaysia mm. where we are mm. right now. Is it mm. fair to say then that our, you know, a, a, I don't know how else to ask it, but our pastors and leaders right now, the leaders in, a, you know, are we not, are they not equipped? Are we not equipped enough to deal with LGBT? You know, because a lot of times when you hear cases, right, I'm sure you're so familiar where people actually go to church. It takes a lot of courage as well to actually go and confess something like that, to admit that you have this, you know, uh, to admit that I'm a lesbian, I'm gay, uh, to your pastor and to your leader. And we hear cases, unfortunately, right, uh, that people get hurt. The place where they were supposed to find refuge, the place where they were supposed to find uh, healing from brokenness, instead they get turned away and they they feel rejected and they feel even more broken. So yeah. is it fair to say then that, you know, unfortunately our church is not equipped uh, enough to, to, to help, you know, to help people, uh, to help the LGBT community? Well, I've got to make sure that my sponsorship still comes. 
<laughs> I we have to make sure of that also. That's why I keep rephrasing, rephrasing, rephrasing. We also, uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> let, let, let me put it this way: mm. that's a lot of room for churches to grow. Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, very okay, enough. Uh, but comparatively, I think. Uh, uh, Let's put it like 19 years ago, yeah. or maybe even um, 15 years ago. Mm. I think churches are pretty. Um, I would say that uh, 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 I I kind of I don't expect them to be really focusing on everything that is social issues. Okay, mm. and even though it was already happening, but during that time, uh, more than 15 years ago, you probably uh, don't get much. Uh, of uh, imitations, or I mean, um, they may want to talk, but they will see how to put you in, to slot you in, you know, mm. that kind of thing. But down the road, with the influence of social media, with the things that is happening right now, uh, let me just put it this: you know, they can't not talk about it anymore. Yeah, they can't run away because the world yeah. is moving at yeah. this pace, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so right now they are. Uh, in a way, we, you know, uh, for the past five years, I think I've got even uh, many more invitations than ever before, mm. and not so much on invitation to talk, but more so on invitation to equip them, to right. train them, so that they are at least not so naive in uh, in reaching out. Mm. So I think that's a good sign. Like you said, you got more invitation. That must be a positive sign right there, right? <laughs> I mean. I'm more happy work, to hear yeah, that. More work, <laughs> more work lah, Obviously, more work. But I think that's a very, very good sign. You know that that mm. that the churches are recognizing. Also, uh, I guess it's also the uh, uh, the the younger generation has also rise up and yeah. uh, and they saw the need and they shared it with their senior pastors. Mm, mm. You know, and that becomes something that is needful to address. Yeah. Would you say as well because uh, you know since we're in Malaysia and your ministry is mm. you know also very much based in Malaysia for now. Uh, mm-hmm. Would you say that culturally speaking, because we are in this part of the world where it, we're in an Asian culture, you know, where things like uh, sex, you know, to talk mm-hmm. about things like homosexuality, to things to mm-hmm. talk about, sense, you know, topics like pornography and things like that, it's all very taboo topic to talk on the pulpit, right? It, we we grew mm-hmm. up in some some churches are very conservative as well. So yes. does culture has to do and traditions have have to do a lot with why? The Malaysian church is somehow always lagging behind. Like the world is here already, people are very open about it. But now only the church, as as you say, the past five years, you've been starting to get a little bit more invites, yeah. a little bit more opportunities. Well, thank God they are they are opening up to talk about this lah. But I I I want to say this from a pastoral perspective yeah. that there are so many issues that the pastors uh, would need to address, mm-hmm. and this is just one of it. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Culture and tradition, you know, does it play a part in your opinion? Like why we are so, not so open to talk about it? I think, uh, I think there's a gap. Uh, there's a gap between the probably 40 and above and the uh, and 30 and below. Th- mm. There is a gap, okay? Um, those who are 30 and below, you know, it's nothing, nothing new under the sun for them. Right. In a way, they, they know more things, okay? Mm. Mm. Uh, so one of the things that we try to do is to Is to create the awareness that the 40 and above will not be too shocked. Mm. Okay, and sometimes it's also because in the church the pastors begin to get uh, cases whereby parents come up to them and say that my my child has confessed, has come out. Mm. Okay, and we don't know what to do. Mm. So sometimes it's because of the needs, then the culture needs to be broken. Right. The custom needs to be broken. The tradition needs to be broken in that sense mm. Mm. to adapt to something that. Has never been spoken. Yeah, uh, I think in the past it's very taboo, but now uh, it is still taboo in certain community. But mm-hmm. I am seeing uh, an openness, lah. Wow, yeah. good. Uh, yeah, I think if you talk about ten years ago, uh, it's still a bit difficult. But now you can't, like I say, the 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 advance of social media. Mm-hmm. You know the, the things that they are, you know the things that the young people are reading and watching and seeing. Yeah, you cannot not talk about it, no. Uh, now this leads very beautifully to my next question because you mentioned just now, you know, that the church cannot run away with the advent of social media, with what the kids are reading today, uh, mm. with what the children, you know, the 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 children are actually listening, uh, the music that they're listening to, the TV mm-hmm. shows that they are watching, even the material that they are reading, everything mm. of this is 
it's a movement. It's a it's sort of like a global thing. You know, you cannot shield yourself away. You cannot force yourself to live in a cave, and. It leads beautifully to my next question because uh, the pressure, you know, we, we see a lot of pressure to normalize and accept LGBT uh, yeah. as as this is a normal thing. You know, it's twenty twenty one. It's this twenty first mm. century. You can stop living, you know, in the mm. past, mm. and mm. we see this pressure so growing so tremendously in the past ten years. You have the Pride March, you know, mm-hmm. and, and 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 most organizations. We're talking about big MNCs as well. You know, we're talking about. Uh, big organizations also support this movement, yes. and so you see this pressure rising in the community, mm. socially, and also we cannot uh, escape legally as well. Same-sex yes. marriage, you know, being legalized in many mm. countries. So you see this 29. increasing, yeah, all around twenty-nine countries now. My goodness, that's yes. that's Since a lot. Last year. Just last yeah. year, there you go, yeah. and you see this increasing. The pressure is increasing mm. in this world, all around. Now why, why, why do you think this is happening? What is going on here? Well, I, I think uh, this is where I always challenge the church mm-hmm. to have uh, to have strategy, okay? Because uh, uh, at least more than fifty over years ago, uh, when the when the gay movement first started, so they already have strategy, and the word is grooming. I I, I use it this way, uh, mm. grooming. So there are two groups of people that they have groomed. The first group will be the lawmakers, the politicians, mm. people who are in power, so that they can change the law of the land. Okay, they can influence the law of the land. Mm. Okay, so it's like it's like imagine fifty over years ago. Uh, that means around my age right now, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. And 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 they have really groomed this group of people who are already in uh, places of power. Right. Okay. Uh, that's why I mentioned just now at least twenty nine, currently twenty nine nations till last year. Have mm-hmm. really endorsed same sex marriage. Okay, it's not something new. And the second group of people that have groomed are people who can who can uh, be an influence through media. Right. So so everything you read, you hear, you watch, you know, has has the element. I remember growing up in my days, the element of LGBT is like hush hush thing. Mm, mm, mm. But nowadays, without the element, it's like incomplete. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because this was because it is intentional. Right. It is to be put in intentionally and very subtly, including even your emojis. Mm. The emojis that you use. It's very subtle. Yeah. It's very subtle because they have already decided that, you know, we are going to create this ideology. Mm-hmm. Okay, and and like it or not, our young people. Um, I'm I'm so sorry to say, the moment you come into the world, mm. you 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 come into a world whereby it's a different ideology. Mm. You don't get a chance to see that you know marriage is a man and a woman anymore. Mm. In fact, it's become multiple, uh, different types of marriages. It can be three. A same-sex union can consist of three men mm. in Colombia. Wow. And uh, and and you 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 are, you are you are born into a generation whereby gender no longer is defined yeah. by your biological sex. Your yeah, that is and that X- is still very mind blowing yeah, to me. Asexual, yeah, the, right? That's, that's a, it's why. A, the, yeah, the XX and XY chromosome doesn't. Uh, it's not valid anymore. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything because gender is basically based on. The culture based on your attitude, based on your feelings. Mm-hmm. And then if I feel like I, I don't want to be he or she, I can be they. That's the pronoun. One of it uh, they use today. Right. But with Brandon, there are more than 100 over types of gender today. Wow. When Okay. This is this is education <laughs> for me. So this is, this is, yeah, this is, <laughs> you're telling me there are 100 over genders. So, so when we talk about just LGBT, it's... It's a very... It yeah, it's yeah. a majority in the minority la, But still, it's yeah. you know, it's yes. a lot that we're actually not covering. Yeah. yeah, what I'm trying to say is that um, you know, people choose human being choose to walk away from the truth of God. Mm. Okay, and uh, and I I can't stop people from wanting to do what they want to do because that's their values, mm. that's their ideology. But if I call myself as a Bible-believing Christian, then what is my value? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Understand. Now, 
you mentioned a lot of young people, you know, and it's interesting. You gave away your age just now. <laughs> you say you're 50 plus. You have seen well, the change. Well, I, I just uh, want the young people to know that I can still be young in the heart. <laughs> amen. La. Yeah, you're still very relevant. No worries. Yeah. yeah. You know, the fact that we can connect and we can talk like this means don't worry. You're certified young already. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what an affirmation. <laughs> no problem. Now, we, you talk a little bit about young people and I love that you mentioned that young people, they are they are born into a very different environment than, than yes. I was 30 years ago or when you were 50 over years ago. Yes. They are born yes. in an environment where it's already, uh, these are the platitudes already. These are the, yeah. th- this is it, you know, you are born in this environment. So we have a lot of young people who tune into the show. So a lot of young people, you know, they go to Sunday school, they go to kids club or they go to youth, mm-hmm. you know, and everything like that. It's mm-hmm. very hard. I would say, and I have to agree as well, Whenever I talk to youth, I would tell this to them as well that they are facing a way different challenge. Uh, not even your time, my time when I was a youth, and the challenges that they are facing today as a youth is very different. And that's why, you know, when we talk about young people, we talk a lot about their parents as well that you have to understand. Yes. They are living in a completely different environment. The challenges that they face, mm. you know, besides the ministry that you're doing, you know, you talk about mm. mental health, you hear about young kids, 12, 13 years old, wanting to commit suicide, you know, yeah. cutting and things like that. Yes. In my time, really, you know, we, we know of such things, but you don't really hear of it. But now it's such a common mm-hmm. thing instead. So that's why I also have yeah. to concede that the young people today face a completely different challenge oh, than yeah. we did. So having said that, how, how would you encourage a young person having mm-hmm. born into this environment? Certainly, it's not their fault. You know, they're just born mm-hmm. in this time. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it, it's considered uncool, right? It's considered, it just say you don't accept LGBT, you know, or you don't watch this or you don't agree with that, you know, uh, or you don't, f- you don't, you don't show your support. You're considered uncool. You're considered colored, you know, you are of the old. How would you encourage a young person who actually, hey, I want to stand up for God, you know, I want to stand up as a Bible-believing Christian, but I'm also considered uncool. Uh, how, how do you affirm someone like that? Well, I think uh, I think the young people are capable to make their own stand. Mm, mm. All right. So if you if you are if you consider yourself a Bible believing Christian, then please go search deep into it. Right. You know, and and if you want to support the cause of something else, let's say you want to find out more about the gay movement and so so forth, then please also find out what is their actual ideology. Mm-hmm. Okay, because. If uh, I always I always tell people this, I'm not here to to have a fight to pick a fight with people of different values than me. Yeah. But I want to be respectful. I want to be respectful. Is that, is that if my friend, uh, choose for example, I I, I have friends who, uh, who smoke. Mm. I, I just give an example. Okay. I I always like to use this. This is the simplest example I can give. Mm-hmm. I friends who smoke after meal they will smoke. Mm. But what happened is that the moment they take out the cigarette and the moment they smoke, I choose to walk away. Right. Okay. Then after walking away a few times, they say, hey, Trefina, why you walk away? Every time we about to smoke, you mm-hmm. walk away. Then I would just ask them, do you really want to know why? You know, and then they say, yeah, tell me. I say, it's because I don't want to be a secondhand smoker. Mm. That's why I walk away. Now, I have no right, hear me, I have no right to tell them that being in gay movement or whatever that you believe is wrong. Mm. I have no right to judge you. I have no right to be correcting you in the sense. But if you were to tell, if you were to ask me, what do I think about it? That's why I say I don't want to be a secondhand smoker. But I didn't tell them to stop smoking. Mm. So what I'm doing there is that, you know, for young people, your friend will have different values than you. First thing first is what is your value? If you are a Bible-believing Christian, then your value should go back to the Word of God. Mm. So my value is based on the Word of God, but I have friends who are also lesbians. I remember I have this couple who came and uh, visited Malaysia. Mm. Uh, Same-sex couple, okay? Uh, I met them in another country. Mm -hmm. So they came over and I became their tour guide. (laughs) Brought them out, you know? And then we were sitting in a Chinese restaurant and, and one of the partner walked away. And this friend of mine said, do you know something, Trefina? It is amazing that we can sit together and eat. She knows what I'm doing. Mm. But I guess, as we are respectful, our friend can also learn to be respectful of our values. Mm. And we don't need to compromise. Mm. 
You know, you don't need to you don't need to compromise in order to be in their gang. Right. But can we, uh, you know, agree to disagree? Let's right. have a platform where we can still talk, still dialogue, and yet be friends. Mm-hmm. I love that example. It's a very good illustration, yeah, because uh, there is a major difference with, between uh, making a stand and you don't have to shove it into their face. This is my stand, yes. all right? Yeah. Uh, you have to, and ob- when you shove it into people's face, obviously the next, the next uh, mechanism is very defensive because you're shoving it to my face. I don't like things being shoved mm. into my face. So automatically yeah. you're inviting a, like you say, you're a inviting fight. a fight already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love that you put it out there as well. That you're not here to pick a fight, you're not out here to to spark a debate. Uh, that yes. you're very clear of what the Lord has placed into your heart, what to do, and yes. you're focused on that. So you're not here yep. to waste your time yep. to sit down yep. and say, "This is why <laughs> you are wrong, and this is why I mean, I'm right." Uh, uh, like a, a PLC is a, is an organization that mm. journey with those who want to discover their own identity. They are already in pain. We are, we, 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 we are not called to add more pain to them. We are not, we are not called to judge them, to condemn them. Mm, and mm. I have people who walk into our doors before and uh, after a few sessions, they feel that, oh, I can't go on and I, and I, and I think that I just want to go back to my old ways and things like that. Mm. I'm not going to say that, oh yeah, good, 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 go and do it. No, but I, I would just end it with this, you know. Uh, I'm so sorry that we have to end it this way, but my door is always open. Mm-hmm. If you ever want to come and talk, you know, and bounce ideas, feel free. Even if they do not want to change, mm-hmm. my door mm-hmm. is still open. Mm-hmm. Wow. I think a lot of churches need to hear this. Uh, I think <laughs> what you just said, uh, you know, is really a, a testament of what you've done in the past, you know, over almost 20 years. And I think a lot of churches also need to have this stance where they can tell people and be bold enough to say that, hey, you know, uh, my door is always open. That when you come in, yeah. the first, the first thing you feel is love, not not condemnation, not shame, yeah. not guilt, uh, because it's not our, it's not our our, our place to that. That's the Holy Spirit's yeah. work, you know, co- to convict yes. you. That's that's not our business, yeah. Yes. So that's very important. And yeah, but Brandon, you you have to emphasize, you know, we don't compromise. Yes, correct. We cannot compromise as well because yeah. a lot of times I think also sometimes we also, I mean, we have to also put it out there. The fact that when you say yeah. you don't compromise, you must be prepared to sacrifice also. Now, that is that's something right. that I think also, you know, it's worth putting it out there. Like, for example, mm-hmm. you gave the illustration, uh, you mm-hmm. know, where we can hope to respect other people's values. It's okay. You know, mm-hmm. we already know that we're starting on the wrong, uh, not wrong food. We're starting on different footing yes. footing already because it's fundamentally we are different. The value system is different. I forgot to end the different. story, you know, Brandon. Oh, okay, okay. You know but, what happened? Uh, after that, after that, they, you know, the next time we went out for dinner, they decided to walk away and let me finish my dinner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they walk away and they puff somewhere else and, right. and, and, and allow me to finish my dinner. What I'm trying to say is that they need to be that mutual respect. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Correct. And I think, like, you know, I was saying just now as well, you know, we must be prepared to make some sacrifices. For example, if just say that friend considers you uncool, if really you say, I choose to make this stand already, I know I know where I stand, I know this is my principles and these are my values. And uh, they, they choose to say, if that's your this one, then I don't want to have anything to do with you. We must also be prepared for something like that uh, oh, to yeah. make that sacrifice. Because, you know, uh, we, we don't want to tell people just the, the nicer side of things, you know, but I'm sure you have your own experiences as well, you know, where mm. e- e- agree to disagree, but after that, they choose mm. not to have any communication with you, not to be in contact with you. Yeah. And I'm sure it's, sometimes it's tough because some of these people can be dear to you, uh, but yeah. at the same time, you cannot do too much about it, right? You cannot, yes. you know, because you cannot compromise on, on the truth of God. So mm. you must be prepared to also say, okay, it's okay. Mm. Is, that, is yeah. that fair to say? Well, I, I just have to have to tell myself that I've done my part and and it's all right, you know. Mm. It's not it's really not about me. Right. Yeah. 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 So because it's the it's 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 being serious, like I'm being serious with my my relationship with God and my walk with God. Mm. I mean if I say that I am a believer of Christ but I don't I don't follow, I don't take heed yeah. of his values and things like that. 
And based on your testimony, you've been there. You, you're living, breathing <laughs> testimony of that, right? I've been there. You, you have been there. Yeah, you were <laughs> in it. Yeah, you were, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and that's why you can come out of it and you can say this yeah. with so much conviction. Yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've, I'm still learning uh, to walk mm-hmm. my talk. Of course, still of learning. course. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, you know, we're slowly running out of time here, but uh, mm-hmm. it's this. I would love to end it with this question now, uh, mm-hmm. you know, because we don't know who's listening. We don't know who's streaming us and everything yeah. like that. But if anyone who's listening right now and mm. this is what's in their heart and they're actually, you know, saying help, they're asking mm. for help in their heart and saying help, mm. you know, uh, Reverend Trifina, I'm listening to you right now, help. What if I am having these homosexual tendencies? You know, what if I'm the one that you're talking about? Mm. What do I do? What do I do? Can I just plead to you? I, I make a plea to you. Uh, please don't struggle alone come out, come out to the right people that you can trust or even come out to us Mm. and come home. That's the four words I want to say, come out and come home, come home to the Lord. Well, you can, you can, uh, you can write into us, help at pluc.org.my and uh, we will respond to you or Mm. you can just go to our website, you know, maybe you do not want to be in touch with us first. Uh, go to our website, plc.org.my and uh, maybe there's some resources there that mm. you may want to just read it for yourself. Mm. Um, and when you are ready, come come and talk to us. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. Don't struggle alone. Don't struggle alone. Mm. You need not have to struggle alone. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people who are also you know, having this and some of them may be Christians, may not be Christians, a lot of time they find themselves mm. they are very lonely as well, yes. right? Yeah. Let, let me just uh, put it this across that um, whether you want to change or not, you want to deal with it or not, it doesn't matter. But if you need someone to talk to, mm. just pick up the phone. I mean, or just drop us an email and just be in touch with us. At least you, we assure you that there, there is a safe place where, a safe platform where you can at least talk through your your struggle and um, I, we are not here to change you we mm. have no right to change you at all but at least you you can be at peace with yourself you know I, I always uh, I always encourage people not to be too high emotionally or too low in depression you know let's stay at the middle where we are more stable so that you can be functional mm. wow mm. fantastic so there you have it uh, to all our listeners out there to those who are watching you've heard it first from Reverend Trifina Law her door is open, all right? I'm going to just say, put it out there. Her door is open. Uh, she is willing and she wants to also uh, be there for you. So you're not in this alone. I think that's so important. That was a great message to end it, to, to let everybody know that you are not alone in this. Uh, Reverend Trifina, before I let you go, do you have any last words you'd like to share before, uh, before we say goodbye? Anything in your heart, anything that the Holy Spirit has just been prompting you uh, before yeah. you know we, we close this? Well, I think uh, if some of you have heard uh, me earlier on in another program, uh, I was a lesbian, but today I'm no longer. Of course, firstly is I'm not born this way. Secondly, um, also because of the faith that I have uh, as a, as a Bible-believing Christian. But I think importantly is that I gave myself a chance to deal with my pain and to find out what happened and to come to terms with it. I want to leave this with you that none of you, none of you okay, those who are struggling, none of you are born this way. But would you give yourself an opportunity just to talk it out? That's again the last word, last four words, come out, come home. Perfect. Wonderful. What a way to end this. What a beautiful, beautiful way to end this. So much grace there. Thank you so much to you, uh, Reverend Trafina, for coming on to share. And uh, we really appreciate it. I think it is one that is going to be so helpful and uh, one that is truly full of love and grace. I can just feel it you know, in your heart already. There's a burden in there. So thank you so much again. Uh, to the rest of you, we also want to say thank you so much for listening to us on Listen Up. And uh, you know, don't forget, if you're looking for a community as well, a very fun community where you can just hang out with and have fun, you can join us on our Discord server. Uh, the link is in the description below. Don't forget, you can also follow us on all, all our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, I don't know if you're on Twitter. No, we're not on Twitter yet. But you can stream us uh, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and if we're subscribed to our YouTube channel as well, uh, subscribe button is 
somewhere somewhere there and you can watch our <laughs> previous episodes and listen up and uh, we're look, looking forward to hear more from you uh, Reverend Trefina and once again thank you so much you. and God bless you thank you so much for listening you. bye-bye bye